Okay, so hi everyone. My name is uh, Christophe Bornet. I uh, work at the uh, Data Stacks and I'm an Apache Pulsar committer. Uh, uh, and uh, um, I have, uh, so I have experience, uh, uh, I have experience in streaming and I have more than 10 years of experience in uh, generative AI. No, I'm kidding because generative AI is no more than one year. So <laughs> I'm like everyone, I, I discover all this. Thing. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, we we can see the room. Everyone is uh, interested in generative AI. So what why is that? Um, in less than a year ago, uh, um, ChatGPT was launched by um, uh, OpenAI, and it has really skyrocketed, and and it's changing the the the, the landscape of the industry. Um, so I I looked at uh, what uh, last year I was doing a talk on on streaming. And I looked at the talks that were related to AI or generative AI. I only found two talks that were talking uh, on, of a subject that were related, uh, but they were on vector search uh, and they were search issues, not uh, AI uh, um, related talks. And uh, today for our community of a code in 2023, there are now 16 talks, including two keynotes. So really uh, generative AI is the, the, the thing of the moment. Uh, open AI uh, uh, and, and a lot of uh, other uh, AI companies see their valuation going uh, uh, with a, uh, the, it's skyrocketing and, and uh, uh, we see that there's a huge market that is uh, that is there and so there's a, a lot of opportunities to, to build good products that will uh, generate revenue. Um, the Apache Foundation has a, a, a lot of projects that are interesting in, in this field. Uh, so I, I selected the, the one that I know. Maybe I, I'm forget. I, I'm missing some, but uh, I, I think there are main, the main ones. So Apache Tika, which is um, related to dealing with unstructured data, uh, parsing files, etc. Uh, Open NLP, uh, it's a, a library full of uh, algorithms for uh, language processing. And uh, we can also name uh, Cassandra, Lucien, and Solar, which are implementing vector search. Okay, so I said that uh, Genelag is uh, changing the industrial landscape. So if you've seen the keynote, there will be some repetition. I, I didn't know that uh, my talk would, would be spoiled by the, by the keynote, but um, so. Uh, in a traditional machine learning, this is the kind of uh, uh, flow that was uh, uh, that is still happening if you're if you're doing traditional machine learning. So you you get a training data, uh, and you are going to uh, create a model. So you will do machine learning engineering involving a, a lot of algorithms, uh, mathematics, uh, neural networks, etc., and you uh, you obtain the model. Then you take the data uh, that you want to apply your model on. So the lab data you want to make a prediction on, you apply the model and you get the results. Uh, so the first phase is called the training phase and the, the, the other phase is often called the inference phase. Um, so uh, the, the characteristics of this way of, of uh, uh, doing uh, machine learning is that the, the training phase costs a lot of, uh, of money. The, the first part is about getting the training data. So often we, it's, we talk about big data. So you need to collect a lot of data from uh, a lot of places, aggregate them, uh, structure them or, or not. But uh, generally you, you need to do preparation of the data, cleanup of the data. This is a very long process. And then you do the machine learning engineering. This, this uh, uh, part also takes time. Uh, you need a highly qualified uh, engineers and, and data scientists that uh, that are highly paid, so uh, it, it's part of the of the cost of the solution. And this process is iterative, often because you, you want to uh, improve your model to uh, reduce the the the, the, the errors, uh, improve the accuracy, and so the it's a long process. Uh, and and when you want a, a, a quick time to market. Uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, restrains you, and also each time you have a new issue, you need to create a new model. So this is not something that you can reuse a lot. Okay, now comes uh, uh, LLMs. So LLMs for la large language model, 
And I will take, for example, uh, the, the most famous, which is uh, GPT from uh, uh, OpenAI. And um, actually, it's it's the same as a traditional model. Uh, that the fundamentally is not very different. You still have training data in this case, the public internet uh, of the public internet text that were available in uh, 2021. Um, someone did machine learning engineering on it. In this case, uh, OpenAI, and we get a model, the LLM. Then we have the live data, which is a prompt. We apply the model, for instance, the chat completion to to the um, to to the uh, to the prompt, and uh, ChatGPT works by uh, when you give it uh, a block of text, it will guess what will be the next word for um, uh, that is most probable for this text. So, if my text is today is my birthday, why not? Okay, so ChatGPT will will find this word for you. Okay, so first thing to, to note is I said it was uh, as of uh, 2021 because it's a very long process and it's still very costly. Uh, so uh, um, uh, you cannot uh, run the training every uh, morning, collect all the data from the internet uh, uh, every week. So it has been done only once uh, since two years. So it's, uh, it's a lot of, uh, of time. It's a lot of money that OpenAI used to, to create the model. But then the interest is that they came with a, a model which is large, so it means that it's trained on uh, um, the, the whole internet knowledge, uh, um, uh, internet text, and so it's very generic model. It can answer to uh, a lot of questions, uh, uh, everything that was uh, written on the internet at this at this moment, and so it means that we can reuse it. Uh, for different other problems. And we shift the problem from uh, building the model to building the prompt. Okay, so now GenAI is just about building a prompt. So uh, people call it prompt, prompt engineer, or prompt engineering, or you can you can call it uh, any way you want if you don't like this term. Uh, and, and now the, the, the thing is not to, to, to build a model, but to build a prompt. And the quality of the, of the prompt is very important because uh, depending on the quality of your, of your prompt, uh, it will uh, impact the accuracy of your results. Also, uh, we are always using the same model, uh, the, the LLM. It's a static model. You cannot really fine tune it. There are techniques, but generally this is not what is what is done because it, it costs a lot to do it. Um, and so what we do is that we include the, the live data that we wanted we must be included in, into the prompt. And also, if you have information that, that uh, were, was not present uh, in the LLM, in the training data of the LLM, then you will need to include it into the prompt to uh, give information uh, to, your, uh, uh, to your prompt. And, and last but not least, the, the size of the prompt is limited. So you, you, you have a 4,000 tokens, for instance, for, uh, for open, uh, open AI. So it means that you cannot put everything uh, you want in, in, the, in the prompt. Okay, so in more details of a prompt, uh, first you have the problem to solve. For instance, I'm an e-commerce company. Should I propose a reduction cotton to the, to the user? Then there's the, the dynamic data I was uh, talking about. Uh, it can be the user payment history. The, item, the, the price of the item, uh, are there any stocks of the item, et cetera, everything that you were using in your former models um, that, that will make help uh, uh, do, uh, do a decision. And this is the first uh, uh, place where streaming has its use because you will need to get information from a lot of places and ag aggregate it and, and prepare it. And this is where uh, even driven ar architecture are, are, are a good match. This was also already a problem before. It's still a problem, so uh, it's still a, it's still a good solution to go to even driven architecture to uh, uh, decouple uh, your different components um, and uh, and have uh, possibility to aggregate data uh, in an asynchronous way, resilient, uh, scalable, etc. Um, then you have your uh, um, domain specific data. So uh, I, I came up with the name domain specific data from the keynote. I thought it was a really great name for, for this part. I, I, it was not my choice. So I changed it to domain specific data because it's really what it is. 
um, you, you need to uh, um, uh, put the rules that are not known by, by the LLM. So it can be because when the LLM uh, was uh, trained, um, it was private data, so OpenAI didn't have access to this data, or it's new data, it's uh, something that is now on the internet but was not on uh, in uh, 2021. Okay, and as I said, the, all these prompts must fit into a limited size of tokens, so there are different models with different number of tokens. Uh, of course, if you use uh, models with higher number of tokens, they will cost uh, more. Okay, so now we we have a problem. Uh, uh, you have a, a, a huge uh, base of, of domain specific data. Uh, and, and probably you can't fit uh, anything into the LLM prompt. For instance, if your uh, domain specific data is, uh, I don't know, Wikipedia, uh, it's, it's way too big. Or you, it's your product catalog of 1 million products, you won't be able to put everything in the prompt. So you need to select this uh, specific, da the specific data that will be useful for the prompt to answer the question. So I'm doing a little uh, um, uh, uh, explanation of what a vector embedding is, because this is what will solve this problem. So um, a vector uh, um, is a, um, a representation uh, of a text in a multidimensional space. And in the end, it's just a mathematical vector like we all uh, learned at, at school. Here, I'm representing it in, in two dimensions, but uh, for uh, an open AI vector, it's uh, 1,536 dimensions. So I cannot represent it here, but the, the concept stays the same. Uh, we will, for uh, each block of text, we will uh, create a vector that represents and captures the essence of what is uh, this block of text. Then what we want to do, is to look uh, which vectors are about the same, and uh, we will uh, compute a similarity. Here in two dimensions, we can see that it's really easy, it's just a matter of uh, computing an angle, uh, and we see that V1 is closer uh, from V2 than, than V3. Okay, so when we go to the embedded world, this is where uh, you have a model that will uh, convert words or block of, of, of text to two vectors. Um, and so um, here uh, we uh, we can see this cat and dog. I'm representing it. it probably it's it's a dimension that looks like animality. And so a cat and dog uh, look close because they probably are uh, animals. And the house is farther because it's, it's not really an animal. Of course, this di dimension that it's not someone who wrote. I want this dimension, I want this dimension, etc. This is something that we, was done by a neural network, and we don't really know what are the dimensions, but they capture uh, the, all those uh, thousands of dimensions, they capture the essence of the world. Um, now you will compute all these vectors, and you will need to, to, uh, to store them somewhere. And, and do a vector search. So when you do a vector search, you want to carry, uh, compute the, the uh, to see what are the vectors that are close to each other because they are uh, meanings or, or they have a context that, are, that is quite similar. And so uh, you start them into a vector database. The problem is that when you want to retrieve the nearest neighbors uh, you want, uh, for a vector, you are not going to do a full scan because it, it would be too, too it would take uh, too, too much compute. So you will use an algorithm um, uh, for instance, uh, HN, SW, or K vector, which are algorithms that help uh, computing very quickly, uh, which are the, the nearest neighbors to, uh, to a neighbor, to, uh, to a vector. And so uh, this is implemented in, uh, implemented in, in, in some uh, new specialized databases that have uh, emerged, you can say Python, uh, images, etc. But it's also quite easy to add it to existing databases. So it's coming to Cassandra, uh, we have it in, a, in, the, in data stacks that strategy, which is also built on, on Cassandra. So now we go back to our problem. Okay, so um, this will help us uh, uh, implementing a pattern which is called retrieval of mountain generation. And uh, in this pattern, you have all your domain specific data. For all the blocks of text you will get, you will compute embeddings using an embedding model. 
and then you store these embeddings into the vector database. So this is the first part where you 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 build your knowledge database of, of vector. Then you have your prompt question, and you will compute the embedding on the prompt, and then you can ask to the, uh, do a, a vector search to get what are the uh, blocks of text that are close uh, to my to my question. And so this will get you uh, documents that are related to uh, your question and that will help the, the LLM to answer the question. So then you add this, uh, these documents, you add them to your prompt. You have a prompt that, that can be uh, sent to the, to the LLM and you, you get your response. And this helps the LLM know that things that were not there uh, when, you, when it was built or it, it also helps, even if it was there, it, it can help it uh, not hallucinate because sometimes uh, LLMs hallucinate. Uh, here, you, you give more uh, uh, context to the LLM, so you, you kind of point it to interesting information for it. So for, to, to build uh, all this, you need a, a, a lot of blocks. Uh, you need to be able to work with unstructured data because we are doing a uh, language. So language is not uh, something that is uh, uh, easily uh, usable uh, such as uh, structured data. So you need to be able to write fact paste, uh, split uh, into chunks that are uh, relevant for the LLM. You need to be able to work also on structured data for uh, uh, different, uh, different things, especially when you are dealing with uh, uh, messages uh, in, uh, in your streaming or, or database, etc. To do the AI operation we talked about, we talked about so computing embeddings, storing them, performing the, the vector search, uh, re-ranking, this is another subject, getting the check conditions, and then connect all this data together uh, between a, a streaming engine, um, uh, a database. Uh, you might want to be able to crawl a website to uh, put the data in, in, in S3, etc. So how to do this? There are a, a, a lot of libraries that have uh, emerged to, to, to do all these blocks uh, uh, unitary, I would say. But what, what we felt is that it's missing something that binds them together, like the, the unitary. And so here comes Langstream. So what is Langstream? Langstream, it's a, uh, it's a runtime that will aggregate all this for you. Uh, so it supports uh, the, the most uh, famous LLMs, so OpenAI, TextAI, Plugin Face. It, you can include uh, libraries, uh, so it uses uh, Apache Kicker. You can also write code in Python uh, in case uh, you want uh, some special libraries. And uh, we have preloaded uh, Langchain and Java Index because they are very popular at the moment. Um, it can uh, use uh, vector stores, uh, Pinecone, Milvus, uh, Cassandra. Uh, and uh, for the messaging part, uh, it supports uh, both Kafka and Pulsar. Uh, for, and for the connector parts, um, uh, you can, uh, there's a lot of connectors for any database. Actually, what we have done is to wrap Kafka Connect uh, inside Langstream. So we are reusing all the connectors from Kafka Connect, but not running them into the Kafka Connect runtime. It's run into the, the Langstream runtime. Okay, so uh, I, I talked about Kafka Connect. Uh, what we did actually is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes na native Kafka Connect. There is this blog post which was published by uh, Gernard Morin. So Gernard Morin is someone quite famous in, in the streaming uh, uh, industry. And um, uh, he pointed that uh, Kafka Connect doesn't deal well with um, uh, Kubernetes because it tries to handle the life cycle of the consumers and producers. And it conflicts with uh, Kubernetes on uh, uh, management of uh, life cycle of pods, etc. So uh, we, we it was a great inspiration for us uh, to uh, build a live stream and uh, the Kafka Connect integration. So even if you don't uh, want to do any AI at all, live stream is a very good uh, alternative for Kafka Connect on, on Kubernetes. And so since we support the Kubernetes, we also have a very good support. Uh, we, we ensure support for AWS, uh, Google Cloud, and, and Azure. Another thing, so um, this time it, it looks more like uh, Pulsar functions. 
um, it is a possibility to write uh, um, custom code in Python. And we have the possibility to mix uh, built-in agents with uh, agents written in Python. And uh, what we did is also that uh, you don't need to have intermediate topics to talk between an agent, a built-in agent, which is written in Java and uh, a Python agent. Um, all this is done by the framework and will run in one pod. So we compose the agents so that they run in one pod. If you want, if you don't want to, if you want to have intermediate topics, it's still possible to have them. But by default, the, the planner will try to uh, merge the, the, the agents uh, it can together. And, and so they will exchange uh, via gRPC, so uh, with a fast um, uh, IPC. Um, and, and, and run in the same pod without consuming any, any capital resources or the services. Okay, so uh, I talked about uh, developing uh, agents in Python. So this is when you have a use case that is not covered by, uh, by mainstream, but we already have a lot of built-in agents. And uh, the idea, our idea is that you shouldn't have to write any code because what you really want to do is to, to get AI responses from AI, not necessarily write, write code. So there are a lot of built-in agents that are already there and that you can uh, use just by declaring uh, code in, in YAML files. Okay, so I will take a, an example. Um, so this is a, a, the kind of uh, application you would uh, create with, uh, with a link chain. So here it's a, uh, it's a web crawler. Uh, it's a chatbot that we want to build. And this chatbot will start by uh, crawling a, a website, uh, extracting the text, so everything that we've seen before, doing some uh, text uh, uh, management of the text, splitting into chunks, and then computing the computing the embeddings. Uh, here it, it goes through a topic, but it could have been uh, written directly to 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 the sync, and the sync will write uh, the embeddings into uh, our uh, vector data store. Um, so this is one of the of the pipeline, and we have another pipeline this time for the chatbot itself that will read from a uh, questions topic on, uh, on the streaming cluster, so Kappa or Alpha. Then it will compute the embeddings of these questions, then do the lookup, uh, getting the, 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 the document that are related to the question uh, inside, from inside the database, and uh, do re-ranking, and uh, call OpenAI to, to do a chat completion. Then the answer is put into uh, a topic, uh, and, and you can consume it. We also have uh, developed something which is called a gateway. So uh, it's um, for people that don't want to use the, the Kafka or Pulsar API. Um, they can use the gateway uh, to, to communicate through with uh, uh, web sockets. Uh, so it's, it can be easily done in, in, in any language. The idea is that you don't really want to care about the, the streaming engine at least at first. Uh, you, you, you may not want to, to, to see that completely, but if you want to, you can. Okay, so um, I have a, a, a little demo. How, how much time is there? Mm -hmm. About 15 minutes. 15 minutes left? Okay. That should be enough. Okay, okay. so um, uh, now let's do the demo. Uh, so this is this is not my computer uh, because the the, the demo gods decided to punish me. I, I wanted to do last minute changes and, and everything crashed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so um, here is uh, what I will run. Uh, um, it's uh, uh, I, I'm just using the mainstream CLI and I'm launching uh, everything in Docker. So I, I could have run it into Kubernetes, but you would have been frightened. So <laughs> I prefer to run Docker. It's uh, it's lighter, and also uh, when you it starts faster, it's uh, easier to to to, to loop, etc. So um, uh, everything will run in, in Docker. It will create uh, the, the the pods we need, and um, I'm feeding it the application. So uh, if we look. 
this is my application. So it's called Do Docker Chatbot. I have my pipelines definitions. So they are exactly what I showed you uh, on the, uh, in, in, the, in the diagram. So you have the document to JSON, etc. Actually, the diagram is a representation of, uh, of the, the configuration files we have here. And we, we said that we want to get very connect uh, uh, the questions topic to uh, user input uh, web services. So let's let's run this. No, uh, I don't know why it won't work. So it's starting. It will take a, a, a little bit of time to 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 start everything. Uh, I suggest if someone has a question, I can I can answer the, the question. Yeah. I'm trying to understand what is the difference between LangChain and LangChain. Yeah. Uh, so uh, LangChain is a it's a library. So uh, it helps you, you, you can use it to, to create an application in Python. But then uh, the question I will ask is, once you have done your uh, application in your notebook, how do you put that in production? Okay. So the problem, LangChain is an awesome library, but then you need something to, to put that in production to have uh, management. How will you scale? How will you uh, retry if you have errors? Uh, how will you uh, get the data um, uh, from somewhere, put it in, in, a, in another place, et cetera. So uh, the idea is of Langstream is to uh, provide um, a, a runtime uh, that works on, on, on Kubernetes and, and that is production ready. So uh, we want to, to shorten the time to, to production. And if you want to use Langstream because uh, there are things in Langstream that you like, it's possible because you can write Python uh, agents and in these Python agents, you can use the, the LangChain objects. So, it, so uh, would it be uh, right to say that if you want to basically um, do a POC, you can use LangChain, and if you want to scale to the level of actually using it in a production case, you would need something like LangChain. Yeah, that's, that's one possible path, yeah. I, I would say you could also, uh, we have a lot of built-in things in, inside uh, uh, Langstream. If they work for you, you can use them directly and you can plug them with uh, other steps done, done with Langstream. Yes. Did I see NAR files in there? Yeah, you, you've seen some NAR files. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So NAR, NAR files, it's, uh, it's really nice because it helps uh, um, uh, isolating the dependencies in, uh, in Java. Uh, so since we have uh, multiple uh, agents running uh, in the same uh, JVM, it's, it's uh, important to isolate the, the dependencies to not have uh, too much problems. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we've seen some things. Uh, I don't know if you've looked, but probably uh, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, so we see that the web crawler has done some things, uh, 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 scrapping uh, uh, the, the website. I use a Langstream website. So uh, the, the interest of uh, um, using, uh, the interest of using the Langstream uh, uh, documentation uh, uh, is that uh, Langstream didn't exist in 2021. So if you go to ChatGPT, you ask uh, what is Langstream, it will say, I, I really don't know. But now I have scrapped the, the, the documentation of Langstream and I, have, I, I can uh, make better search, get the documents uh, uh, important to answer Langstream questions and uh, get useful answers on, on, uh, on what is uh, um, on the documentation of Langstream. So here I'm using again the, the Langstream CLI to spawn. Uh, um, so it's a, a gateway chat. The interest is that um, you you pass a user uh, uh, you pass a consumer, so you say I will get answers from the both output, so the answers from the from the chat, and I uh, feed the uh, questions to user input. So what what we get here is, is it's a it's a chatbot, uh, like the one you know you you have uh, in uh, in ChatGPT UI. So I can uh, ask now uh, some uh, questions. Okay. So what is Langstream? Will it be able to answer? 
Okay, so the, the demo gods have not failed me completely. <laughs> okay, so uh, normally it's it, it, uh, the speed is better because the Wi-Fi network is better than that. Here it's slow because the network is really, really slow. Uh, but the answers they come from uh, uh, open AI, so they, they are the, the same uh, speed as what you, you get in, in open AI. Okay, so line stream is an open source framework, just like so it's um, it, it makes sense. Okay, visual idea or it's just copy What? So it is copy paste or visual? Oh, it's gener it generated. Let, let, let's try something. Ask again, ask again the question. You know that normally there's some randomness in what OpenAI does. So the, the answer should be different. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between the and the Oh, yeah. You, you ask the question. OK, so it looks a lot alike. <laughs> But it's not exactly the same, look. Okay. okay taking time. Okay. Yeah. Another question Yeah, so um as I said, you have a web socket that, that you can use directly, or uh, if you want to put a backend in between, it's, it's also possible that would communicate directly with uh, with Kafka, Pulsar, or other web sockets. Don't, don't I need uh, uh, using language stream to connect, or can I go directly for a topic? For example, you need to a topic and select it. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you can submit directly to, to the topic from your, uh, from from an application you mean a mobile application well, uh, you would need to expose uh, uh, your uh, your Kafka on, on the internet maybe, maybe not the best idea but uh, why not no one will know for I look like uh, for Langstream, uh, Langstream is Apache license, yeah, it's, and it's uh, it's open source. It's it's not an Apache project yet, <laughs> but it's Apache license, yeah, and uh, and we want to be uh, uh, quite agnostic of the technologies we, we use. So I said you, you can use uh, Kafka because it's uh, the most popular everyone uses it, or you can use Pulsar because it's the best. Uh, it's <laughs> I am not a principal so I'm not a <laughs> Okay, so uh, no more questions. Oh, thanks, everyone. Um, I'm just going back to the slides quickly. Okay, so well, thank you, everyone. Uh, some links uh, where you can uh, uh, find uh, useful information, so Langstream.ai, uh, the repo GitHub Langstream. So don't hesitate to go to uh, uh, the GitHub repo, and you know when you start a, a, an open source project, it's very important to get visibility through, through stars, so it would be very appreciated. Uh, you can reach uh, to me uh, on Twitter uh, with cbarnet underscore. And uh, if you would want to, to try a, a vector search uh, database, uh, of course, uh, use Astra because this, this is our stuff. Is it a Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, you, if you go to the Langstream uh, GitHub uh, repo, you will see a bunch of other resources. So you, you can reach us uh, on Slack also. Uh, so it's really uh, an open source project. It's not a data, data stacks uh, project that we want to, to get. So. It's uh, up to everyone to do so. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of experience dealing with uh, uh, high volume and uh, high crypto applications. And so we've reused all this uh, experience. Uh, this is why we use Kubernetes. Uh, 
uh, to simplify all this, or even though it's not that simple, but <laughs> it helps. And so, uh, yeah, we, we have re reused uh, all, all our knowledge from uh, other sources. Uh, I, I said we, we got inspirations from uh, tensor functions, from uh, Kafka Connor, from uh, a lot of things. And we uh, we have customers that are on on their way uh, into production. So. Okay. Well, some more questions in there. Let's get some uh, hallucinations going. Huh? You want you you want hallucinations? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. it's not that hard, but no. it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> it's open AI. So. Yeah. So maybe the question is how quickly can you get them all to hallucinate? Yeah, and I'm using the GPT string because I do not have money. So, <laughs> you could use hugging face as a model. Uh, hugging, hugging face, yeah. Hugging face is uh, the blue model is free to fall. Yeah, but it's uh, uh trained on what it's like, it's, it's on, on how much data was it trained? It's not quite as many. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, I would like to ask something to the answer. Uh, yes, uh, this is around time to build the uh, three given applications and generative AI. And but now there are many, many efforts, uh, you know, in universities, many researchers are trying to find the best ways to um, query the LLM. So, for instance, uh, Christoph cited the MMR for re ranking the results from the vector. Yeah. And now we are, we are preparing demos about how to implement all the most popular factors like, like clear, you know, it's, uh, there are many, many technologies, uh, trials to prepare good prompts for the LLM. So all this stuff uh, prevents the LLM from thinking, but you know, everybody knows that uh, this summer this stuff came out. So next week is the wrong time to build your application. Then, <laughs> To build your product. We have some questions. Yeah. yeah. So, one of the things that I think that you don't have the data, you have a team of people in the So, assuming that the system will be running for a very long period of time, mm -hmm. how would you keep the data relevant? The data that you receive after that is so it, that's uh, an answer we, we can give to Langchain. If you do Langchain, you, you will see that the document loaders, they are meant to be run once. And so uh, that, uh, that's one of the problems I think of Langchain. It, it's not meant to be updated. And the interest of training is that it's easy to update because you get new data, you can feed it to, to your uh, existing, uh, for instance, you can create new vectors. Uh, if, if I have a new product, uh, I can automatically uh, create a pipeline to create a new vector. Uh, if I want, if if uh, I'm crawling my uh, uh, my website, uh, actually, what you didn't see that there's a, a retry um, uh, interval, uh, not not retry, but refresh interval for the for the web crawler. So by default, we have set it to to, to one hour. Every every hour, it will crawl again the the, the website. It will store. Uh, which uh, um, uh, URLs were already called, so we don't recompute uh, again the embeddings because these are the cost. And but it will uh, it will uh, re recreate the embeddings for new pages or pages that have been uh, updated. Mm -hmm. Did you do, when you do Kafka topics to store all the data that comes from because from one agent to another agent? So if you capture uh, 1,000 documents, uh, 100 documents from the vector, and we are not storing them in the Kafka topics so, because there is a, a standard, and to as a standard that is enough smart to figure out that the, the query to the vector that is must run in the same JVM as the um, from the code to the agent that calls the LLM. So in that case, we are not storing the data, so it's only in memory. 
Yeah, this is <laughs> but also if you deal with uh, uh This is asynchronous. This is uh, this is the point of time. Yeah. <laughs> this is these are really cool examples. I think that 